On August 25th, 2020, residents along the Texas and Louisiana coastlines began urgent preparations for Hurricane Laura. As people evacuated from areas at risk to storm surge, our team gathered our gear together and drove into the path of the oncoming storm. By the time we reached coastal communities, business owners and homeowners had already boarded up and moved inland. Most areas were ghost towns, the haunting silence of abandoned neighborhoods being its own warning that something major was about to happen. By noon on August 26th, the storm still 160 miles away and 12 hours from landfall, storm surge began creeping onto the streets of Louisiana beaches. With the last of the evacuees having left their homes, and water beginning to flood roadways. Police blocked access to the coast, leaving the beaches a veritable no man's land, where storm surge and wind would combine to create unsurvivable conditions. It was now a waiting game. In just a matter of hours, the quiet communities around Southern Louisiana would be subjected to the strongest hurricane ever recorded in that section of the state. With Laura barreling closer to the coast, daylight began to fade. The tranquil scenes at dusk were a stark contrast to what was closing in. As light rain began to fall, a haunting crimson color filled the sky over Lake Charles. In essence, a last warning from Mother Nature that a dangerous night was about to begin. Hurricane Laura was now a ferocious Category 4 storm and continuing to intensify. At dusk, wind speeds were in excess of 140 miles an hour. By the time it would reach the Louisiana coast, sustained winds would reach 150 miles an hour. With darkness came the first gusts of wind. The hours-long onslaught was just beginning. Days of preparation were about to be put to the test. A check of the radar confirmed that we were in the direct path of the hurricane and the radar presentation continued to reveal a healthy storm. Despite having various fallback locations, no adjustments to our location were needed. We were planting our heels in downtown Lake Charles to experience the strongest part of a hurricane, the right front quadrant. With each passing moment, we watched the slow and steady climb in the wind speeds. It wasn't long before more significant gusts began howling through the streets of Lake Charles. With every hurricane, our team has a threshold for when it's time to seek sturdy shelter. Just after 1 a.m. on August 27th, with the eye wall closing in, the tipping point was reached. Wow, 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 wow. I have debris in the back window. Cars rock pretty violently. Wow. Alright, I'm seeing the break. We're gonna push our load. 
left here. We gotta end it right in. As other storm chasers began making their way back to their designated safe spots, the full force of Hurricane Laura came into Lake Charles. The eye wall of this Category 4 monster was about to unleash hell on Earth. As Hurricane Laura's winds were funneled between buildings, it created vicious currents of air throughout the city. Within the corner of downtown's Capital One Tower, a vortex of insulation, drywall, metal, and glass sent shreds of deadly debris flying downwind of our location. part of the eye wall is now hitting us in Hurricane Laura here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. This building is getting completely destroyed. It's a glass building. All the insulation is coming out. All the glass is broken out. A deafening sound filled the air as nearby buildings added to the chorus of structures being ripped apart. This right here. 
here is becoming the worst part of the storm. Good. As we entered the eye, what we had expected to be a break in the assault was anything but. Small circulations wrapping around the eye created sporadic bursts of extreme wind gusts. The calm of the eye eluded us, and the second half of a monstrous storm was closing in. We were only halfway through. We just experienced the uh, north, the northeastern part of the eye wall, which was absolutely intense watched uh, a glass building. I don't know what the name of the building is, but uh, it got ripped to shreds. Shards of glass everywhere. Insulation is going all over the place. Seeing parts of roofs uh, just being taken off. Signs, everything. Oh my God. Jeez. Is he okay? It's Rigsby. Stuff. Just going bananas. Yeah, we've got we've got major debris blowing into the parking garage right now. Um, big old pieces of metal poised to come straight at us. So we're uh, repositioning here. No, I mean like back behind that wall, man. This is gonna come straight for the windshield. See how it's blowing in. of the wind within the eye wall was so powerful that metal objects sparked as they were slammed onto the pavement outside our parking garage. With the other side of the eye wall now over us, debris began to blow in the opposite direction, leaving us to find new corners of the garage to film from. Despite still being in hurricane force winds, exhaustion got the best of us, and having found a safe corner in the parking garage, we fell asleep. We knew when we woke up that morning would reveal a ravaged city. With daylight, the full extent of Hurricane Laura's impact was illuminated. The area immediately surrounding the parking garage was heavily damaged.
Most shops had their windows blown out or roofs collapsed, allowing wind, rain, and blowing debris to pour into their businesses. As we began our drive into residential areas of Lake Charles, the full extent of the damage became clear. Every street we drove by was a display of ruin. Business after business, home after home, each building we saw suffered some kind of damage, many complete destruction. As of this recording, the storm caused an estimated four to $12 billion in damage and 15 deaths. As a final blow to the city of Lake Charles, a local chemical plant that suffered damage from the storm erupted into flames, sending a toxic cloud of chlorine gas into the air. Nearby neighborhoods that had just been ravaged by Category 4 strength winds were now immersed in a dark cloud of dangerous chemicals. Lake Charles and the surrounding towns in southern Louisiana have a long road to recovery. It will be years before life returns to some semblance of normalcy. Please consider giving to a trusted relief organization to help our neighbors in need. Together, we can make an impact. <laughs>